Hey, what's going on everyone? Um, this is the video that I was talking about that I was going to do where I go over the mods and recent things I've done to the Hawk 250. Uh, this is the DLX, the fuel injected model. So first things first, I'll go over the headlight. I actually got this idea from um, someone else on the Facebook group. It's a seven inch uh, LED headlight. Um, it has the uh, angel eyes um, running at daytime LED running lights. And then uh, when you use the turn signal, they switch to the turn signal. And then I also put um, smaller LED uh, turn signals in the rear because the stock ones I had, my brackets are a little bent, but the stock ones were too long. So every time I tip it over, they would end up, the lens would pop out or something. So I just put these little short ones in there. Also put a uh, LED tail light in there that blinks uh, three times when you uh, brake. And then here's the other side. But yeah, this headlight is sick. Um, it, allowed me to delete the front turn signals and I feel like this is much brighter than stock anyways. Um, I also went with a uh, seven inch um, headlight guard. I think this was like $12 on Amazon. Um, it just bolts right in here to the um, this the, the, the bucket of the headlight, which you ha also have to buy separately. So the headlight I think was um, 45 or something I might have gotten it um, like open box or something so that was 45 I think the bucket was 30 and then you have to get the headlight guard if you want this too and I think that was like 13 um, and then also is this mounting solution so the bucket will come with its own mounting solution but it doesn't work uh, with the imported forks uh, fork, uh, forks because uh, they're wider up here at the top uh, as opposed to you know like down here where normally it's flipped and you have the skinnier part at the top so I had to get some wider um, uh, headlight uh, mounting brackets, and I think these go up to like 60 millimeters. I can't remember what um, the measurement I did on it was, but um, these work perfect. Um, the only thing is you have to buy them separately, and I think that was like $16. So, uh, but no modifications required. Um, everything bolts in, um, and actually with a bike idling and vibrating the headlight is like the one thing that doesn't move because it's got rubber mounts and stuff uh, pretty happy with it um, the harness that the headlight comes with uh, is different than the harness um, that the OE uh, headlight uses so what I did was um, I'll show you over here I took the harness off of the stock light And I just reused it. Um, the headlight that uh, the LED headlight um, it comes with uh, basically the same wires and they're color coded the same. So I just took a pin, uh, a little pick, um, and I pushed it in the the plug and uh, popped the plug off, and um, and then put the plug on this headlight and then it uh, taps right into the factory harness. So plugged right in, uh, works great. <laughs> Um, one little trick that I did too was um, there was this big blob of, as you know, cables back here. Well, with this headlight, it comes with a um, H4 like converter cable or something, and it was really big and it was like blue and green and it looked hideous and you could see it right through the side. Uh, sorry, it's really bright. But I ended up, um, there's a hole at the bottom and you can see this uh, wire loom right here. I put some wire loom over the wires and I pushed it up inside of the helmet. I mean, the helmet, the headlight. Um, now, I know there's a heat sink on the back of this headlight and the wires are uh, in there around the uh, heat sink. So I'm gonna keep an eye on it and make sure that um, it doesn't overheat and melt the wires. Uh, yeah, so that's the headlight. I'll put all the links and stuff in the comments of uh, the video. Uh, I got the Tusk uh, fender bag. I put on the uh, Kenda Trek Masters. Um, first time changing a tire, and I put the Kenda um, heavy duty tubes in there too. Uh, first time, I just bought some cheap spoons and used the bucket, and it wasn't too bad. I had trouble getting the bead set, but um, it's a trick if you can't get the bead to set and you've aired it up and deflated it multiple times, is heat the tire up. I uh, used a heat gun, and the area where um, I think it was like down here, it wouldn't set correctly. <laughs> So I just heated it up and then deflated it. And then once I put air it again, then it's set. So a little trick if you uh, run into issues. Uh, I got the TT250 skid plate, uh, bolts right up. 
I have a IMS uh, shifter on the way, but it's still not here yet. Oh, sorry, I'm sniffing. It's really cold out in Colorado. Uh, so up here, I got this 12-volt uh, cigarette lighter. And this is really neat because um, what I do is I have a cable that goes from a cigarette lighter to a SAE. So I have it whenever I want to put my bike on the uh, tender. I just plug it into there, and then the other end goes into the uh, SAE connector, and then I just that's how I power it. And then also, this is for my... Um, uh, my air compressor. So this thing right here, it uh, uh, yeah has this connector right here that it also uses. Yeah, so I can plug that in there and uh, air my tires up if I air down to go off road or something like that. So yeah, it's pretty handy. I really like that. Um, then I also over here. I have a, um, a little USB plug. Sorry about that autofocusing. I just used some self tappers and drilled them straight into the aluminum hand guards and that works fine. That's really on there. It's not going anywhere and this just mounts like that. I really like low profile stuff so I didn't want anything too bulky when I found this. I'll put links to this stuff too if you're interested. Uh, these are um, foam grip covers they just go over the stock grips they're supposed to help reduce some of the vibrations and i think they do and also it makes it uh, thicker so it takes less uh wrist movement to um you know wide open throttle or whatever i did break one of the stock mirrors and then i put um these ones that can bend um and then i broke one of these two so that's why only, i'm only running one so uh i need to um slide this whole mounting solution over to keep this in so it stops breaking off when I drop the bike because I do go hard on this thing. Um, this is a little bag that I fixed up. Um, it's a little mole, molly, however you want to say it, pouch bag. And I put some um, uh, magnets, some rare earth metal magnets on the inside of this bag and then I taped them with Gorilla Tape. So you can kind of see them right there like there's two and uh, it just sticks to it. And like it's not coming off. It actually takes a little bit of force to pull it off. Um, yeah, but I just keep my registration. I put two more uh, magnets on the bottom. Keep my registration in here and stuff like that. A little pouch. Yeah, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't like the idea of it being able to come off in the registration, so I'm gonna put some sort of nylon straps that run through it. You know, coming from the underside of the tank and they go up to keep it on there where it's magnetic and um, also you know it'll keep it so it I don't lose it. I have never. This has never come off uh, with all the riding I've done and dropping and stuff, but I just still makes me a little nervous. Um, I did lower the front forks by like three quarters of an inch because um, I put the uh, 200 and, oh shit, can't see it there, I'm sorry. 200 and, uh, there it is, in there, 95 millimeter shock. Um, yeah, and also the uh, spacers. There's a spacer on either side. I got them from aluminumspacers.com. You have to have two, I think it's five millimeters at the bottom spacers, and then two 10 millimeter at the top. And that's pretty tricky to get to install that, to slide in the, putting the spacers on either side of the shock and then sliding it up there. But uh, just keep fiddling with it and you'll figure it out. But yeah, I think that dropped the bike by two inches. Um, I also have the seat concept seat under here for the it's uh, underneath this Coleman Mad Dog cover, but um, yeah, seat concept seat. I think that drops the bike by like an inch and a half or another two inches or something like that. And then the the Coleman, I'm sure adds like <clears throat> third to, <clears throat> excuse me, a third to a half inch. So, um, but now I'm five foot 10 and I can, uh, I can finally flat foot one side. So that was what I, that was my goal was to be able to flat foot at least one of my feet. So I can't do both. I, I mean, I can do be on the balls of my feet, but uh, so these are the Wolfman, Wolfman tail bag and uh, the Wolfman saddle bags. I think both of these models are discontinued. They're old beaters that I've had on many bikes, but um, they work really good. I am about to go to Harbor Freight and get a little Apache um, gun case right here, like the small one. Uh, that's why I have no bolts in here because I'm gonna you know, drill through the bottom of the case and put that little box right here. I used to have the rack from the TBR7 on there, but I ended up not really ever using it, and it kind of sticks out a little further than I'd like, so I'm just gonna put the little Apache gun case on the back and 
I think that'll be pretty sick. For the rear sprocket, um, I went with a 43 tooth because the DLX comes with a stock 16 tooth. So 16, uh, 43, or wait, did I say 43 earlier? I, th I meant to say 43. Um, so the 1643 setup is similar to the 1745 that most people do. I just didn't want to change the front if I didn't have to. And then I ended up taking too many links out of the stock chain. So I said, fuck it. And then I went and got this Pro Taper gold chain. Um, I still got to put the chain uh, guard back on, but that works really well. Um, I didn't notice too big of a difference going from the stock 50 to the um, 43 tooth rear sprocket. I mean, it brings the gears out, you know, a little bit taller, but not... A, a whole lot is definitely a little noticeable, but it's not like a, a miracle or anything like that. It's still re geared really low, so um, Yeah I know I'm forgetting something else We'll just do a walk around Oh, I ended up chopping the uh, the big lobster tail, you know rear fender that these bikes come with I just uh, cut it and then put a bolt through the license plate here and I put some electrical tape at the top because basically with one bolt it's resting um, against the top of the tail light but it's not it's not gonna go anywhere uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on this and make sure it doesn't like cut into the plastic with you know vibrating and stuff like that but you know I think it'll be fine just one bolt through there it looks really good cleans up that rear end you know instead of having you know this big thing that sticks out it just kind of brings it all up <laughs> I think that's about it, honestly. I mean, the hand guards, I got them off Amazon, they're like 20 bucks. Yeah, I'll put um, links to everything that I've done that I can remember at least to the bike in the comments. Uh, so you can check those out and try it if you want. I think I have, yeah, 127 miles. So pretty much all trail miles though. Um, I just moved to Colorado, so. <laughs> That was one of the big deals I got. bought this bike. I'm from South Carolina. I bought it before I moved. Uh, brought it out here and I've just been ripping it. Um, and I just put in like 30 days of leave. So I'm about to, and now that's warming up, I'm about to take this thing out and really test it. So um, I'm sure I'll be posting pictures and shit like that, issues I have along the way. But uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, just uh, feel free to give me a shout. And if you're in Colorado, specifically the Springs, uh, give me a shout out and uh, maybe we can ride together um, or you can show me around. I'm looking for some uh, trails and moto camping and stuff like that. So, all right, thanks guys.